today we're going to look at a couple of finer element analysis examples. Uh, I've got a plastic tank here. As you can see, I've added two surface cuts to look at a quarter model. So we're going to create two models today. One of them is going to look at a straight hydrostatic load. What happens when this tank is full of water? How do we represent that load using a non-uniform pressure? Then we're going to do a more complex example where we're going to look at the pressure on the inside from the water at a low level and then the hydrostatic pressure from the from the soil exerted on the outside and trying to evaluate whether it's going to come out of the ground or not. So let's start by making a new study. Um, the first thing I need to do is obviously our pressure at the top of where the water level is going to be zero and it's going to increase down to a maximum at the bottom using the uh, equation rho gh. So obviously rho is the density of the water in it and g is uh, 9.81 so 9810 times the distance of any particular point along here so we're going to do that by defining a coordinate system I'm going to put the coordinate system at a node on the top and I'm going to use the y value I'm going to just oops, spin it round so 0y is going to be 0 pressure, and as that y, so each of these bits of geometry will have a, an xy coordinate that will allow me to change the pressure based on what that is. So I can use that to create my hydrostatic load. So we're going to make a new simulation study and apply that load. Simple hydro. Okay, so I'm going to apply that load first. So the pressure load, and I'm going to put it on all these inside faces. Just select tangency for a nice quick selection. Okay, and rather than having just a static value, we're going to use a non-uniform distribution. So this is going to use that coordinate system we just created. It's going to multiply this value according to its x and y. So what I want to do is say make sure I get the right units. So I know a thousand kilograms per meter cubed times 9.81 meters per second which is SI units so that times the distance Y so this equation all it needs to use is the Y so this value times whatever the Y value will give me my hydrostatic pressure in fact once you've done it you'll see the distribution graphically displayed on the plot. Okay, and all we need to do now is apply a, uh, a roller slider on the bottom and a symmetry condition on the outside faces. So we're using solids today just for convenience of setup and we're going to keep our mesh very coarse. So these curvy geometries are very well suited to a curvature based measure. I'm going to let that run. So when we're done, what we should do is list the resulting force at the bottom to verify that it equals the, the weight of the water we're expecting to see. So list result force on this bottom face. And we can see that reaction force of 37 newtons. OK, so that should equal what we're expecting the water mass to weigh or in our case a quarter of that water mass. Okay so that's great so uh, let's talk about that more uh, complex example. I'm just going to suppress this one and what you'll see I've got on here is uh, a series of other features that we're going to step through and have a look at each of them. So I've added a plane at the inside water level. So clearly as the inside water level goes down it will exert less pressure back outward. And I've used a split feature. From my curves dialog box I can split this face to give me a split line. I then created a sketch that connects to that plane and a coordinate system that can be used that will vary depending on wherever I put my plane. So as I move this up and down, my split line will change as will my coordinate system. 
I've done one more sketch and coordinate system at the top, which is going to be my zero reference for my water pressure for the outside of my tank. Okay, so let's come through and have a look at how we finish that setup. So, in fact, I've got one that I've done earlier, and we can see I've got the same hydrostatic pressure on the inside, just on those surfaces up to that point. And we can see this distribution using the same 9810 by Y. And on the outside, all over, we have a distribution of water pressure based on the second coordinate system. So clearly, this is uh, going to try and pop it out of the ground because the water pressure is going to be higher here at the top. So depending on the depth, depending on that difference in the water pressure. Okay. So we're going to create that mesh. Again, this time, instead of having uh, my roller slider on the bottom, I have it on the top, because I know this is going to exert an upward force and try and come up from the ground. Okay, so when this gets this runs, we'll be able to list that reaction force on the upward side. We can animate it and see it. Squashing the tank. And we can list, right click on the results and list our result force on this top surface and go update. And we can see that we've got a 27.5 newtons, so only about 3 kilos. And the soil in this case is probably going to weigh about mm, 10 to 15 kilos. So it's definitely not going to pop out. So we can redo that and make some changes. I did one here uh, with a shell for a larger tank. And we can see at this point we um, list the result force. We can see this is obviously going to alter around the 20 kilos, but the mass of soil has also increased. So this can be used to run and create these uh, hydrostatic cases quite quickly. Okay, thanks for listening. Uh, look forward to talking again soon.